Hey, it's Mike here, and today we're gonna look at what I believe is the most important quality for a vegan to possess in order to stay vegan, to keep eating the way that they really wanna eat deep down inside. This is not gonna be a motivational speech, don't worry. Is it compassion? Is it the ability to see through BS or to do research? No, well, all of those are super important. It's actually the ability to say no. Okay, that's all, that's the end of the video, see you later. Just kidding, actually we have a lot more to cover. We're gonna talk about some obstacles to saying no. We're gonna look at some studies that are related to this topic. And we're gonna look at the case of YouTuber Lexi Lombard who very recently quit veganism. All right, okay, so why is it so important to be able to say no? Well, you can be the healthiest vegan or the most ethical vegan, but when you go back home and you're cornered by eight of your relatives, you need to be able to say, no, I don't want any of your cow lactation soup, Aunt Martha. Okay, you don't have to be crazy or condescending, which brings me to how it helps to also be good at saying no. So maybe more of like a, a no thanks. That's not as catchy. But from what I've gathered, where I see a lot of vegans fail is that they maybe don't have the highest level of self-confidence. So their no might be more of a, no, I, I'd rather not. I'm on my house. This sort of opens what you could call the doubt door, where whoever you were talking about sort of senses that hesitation and starts to pry and pry and force you to eat animal products because it seems like you don't know what you're talking about. And the moment people find out you're vegan, they'll often turn into a nutritionist immediately. Before you know it, they're whipping out their stethoscope and they're like, you clearly have no idea what you're doing. I can hardly hear your heartbeat. Martha, I need 10 mils of bacon fat stat. You're gonna pull through. The point is you need to be able to resist peer pressure and family pressure and other social pressures. In the past, I've mentioned the term gumption and I wanna talk about it again real quick. Many of you weren't super familiar with this term so the definition officially is quote, shrewd or spirited initiative or resourcefulness. And I love the way they use it in the sentence, quote, she had the gumption to put her foot down and head off Dan from those crazy schemes. In a vegan context, she had the gumption to put her foot down and tell Aunt Martha to back the F off with her lactation soup, crazy Martha. You know, gumption is sticking to your guns. It's about not being a sheep, no offense sheep. And it's not always easy to say no. Theorizing from an evolutionary perspective for a second, we have millions of years of doing what the tribe does in order to survive. So saying no can be really difficult. It kind of triggers a you're gonna die response, which is why it's so hard. And this makes sense because perhaps in prehistoric times, saying no too many times to your tribe could lead to you becoming abandoned, which would obviously decrease your chance of survival. And one thing that I find really interesting is that there's so many stories of heroes and movies in general where the main character is really saying no to the group and then doing something different because they think it is right. It's like, as humans, we love to see people say no and stand up unless they're saying no to us. Say no to corporations, yeah. Say no to the government, yeah. Say no to eating animals. Wait, what? Uh, we, don't, we don't need to go that far. And I think this cultural support of rebellion is really interesting because we have two forces playing against each other. We have the force of be like the tribe to help yourself survive, but then we also rely on certain courageous individuals to catalyze change within the group so that the group is more likely to survive as a whole, and those are kind of battling each other. Here's a, a more ridiculous example. You know, maybe we should stop eating human meat because it seems like everyone around here is getting human prion disease. I mean, look at Billy, he's twitching over there in the corner. You know what, I'm gonna stop eating human meat. No, Martha, I'm not gonna eat you. Moving on, I was talking to one of my patrons recently, Hey Wayne, and he mentioned that there are studies about how the hungrier you are, the less discipline you have, and of course, that can mean the easier it is to fail being vegan or fail being a healthier vegan. Here's a review of 10 studies looking at hunger and self-control. And it's clear by looking through these studies that the hungrier you are, the worse you are at pretty much everything. And that definitely applies to your ability to resist eating foods that you really don't wanna eat. This also connects with research about how the further away you get from a meal, the worse you become at making decisions. This astounding study looked at judges and how merciful their decisions were in the realm of things like taking somebody off parole all in terms of how long it had been since their last meal. Quote, we find that the percentage of favorable rulings drops gradually from approximately 65% to nearly zero within each decision session and returns abruptly to about 65% after a break. In other words, if your judge just ate, there was about a 65% chance that you're gonna get let off the hook. But if it was like 11.59 and they were just about to eat, it was probably around like a 98% chance that you're screwed. 
All of this research really points to how if you are gonna fail on a vegan diet, it's definitely gonna be when you're hungry. And a lot of that has to do with being prepared and making sure you've eaten enough calories, which is my number one reason that vegans fail that I've talked about enough. I don't need to talk about it in this video. One perfect example of this is YouTuber Lexi Lombard, who recently quit veganism and talks about that in her video that she released less than a week ago at this point. How did she end up quitting? Well, she was on a road trip and she was really hungry and ended up being presented with a locally produced egg and there were some eggs from the neighbor's farm and I remember holding up that egg and looking at it and just thinking to myself like this egg isn't cruel this egg comes from a chicken with the absolute best life like this egg is this egg is a good egg and for some background she was moving from an environment LA with a vegan community where she didn't have to say no very much to a less vegan supportive community where she would have to say no a lot. Or have like your grandma's cinnamon rolls at Christmas or some chicken noodle soup that someone brings you when you're sick and they don't know that you're vegan, things like that. I want to be able to make those exceptions. Now I didn't realize she said this the first time I watched the video, but what she's about to say perfectly fits with the theme of this video. I've been vegan for two and a half years and I've kind of lost sight of why I love it so much. So why don't we just start saying yes to whatever. And there's more to Lexi's story, but I'm gonna cut it off there. But I will say, let me know down below if you want me to do a vegan on the road video. Now, obviously the more reasons you have to say no, the easier it would be to stay vegan. Ethical vegans can benefit from learning about the health message. They'll be less likely to think that eating a backyard egg, AKA cholesterol bomb would be okay. Or if you're a health vegan, it helps to learn about the ethical message. Like if you're aware of all the ways that egg layers die that are not related to the horrible conditions, just they're 20 times accelerated breeding, things like egg binding, then you're gonna be less likely to be like, oh, egg whites are okay, they don't have cholesterol. And you're definitely gonna be less likely to be like, oh, I would love to be a laying hen. Like I would love to be the chicken that laid this egg. And finally, both points of view obviously benefit from learning about the environmental destruction of animal products. My final point here is more of an observation and that is why there are so many alternative people in the vegan movement, although a lot more quote normal people are going vegan now. And that is because if you do have an alternative lifestyle, like if you're dressing goth every day, saying no to dressing normally, then you're used to saying no. Simply put, if you're used to saying no all the time, it's just gonna be a lot easier. In the end, veganism is a rebellion and we love our rebellions. The only problem is it's not always easy to be a rebel. And now I don't really wanna sound like the D.A.R.E. campaign, just say no to drugs, but just say no to animal products, partially because that just completely failed statistically. Now I think it's more important to understand the nuances of saying no, why it's hard to resist social pressure, and especially when you're hungry, how it's hard to make the right decision. And finally, I think it's important to shift your perspective on saying no from something that you might be afraid of doing to something that is actually pretty empowering and satisfying. Sometimes you just need to say, no, Martha. Okay, that's it. I wanted to keep this video pretty short, but for fun, down below, let me know if you can think of a movie where it's all about saying no and saving the day. Type it in the comments. By the way, I will be at the LA Veg Fest on Sunday, May 6th, playing Vegan Jeopardy and hosting a social media panel. And when I get back, I am possibly gonna do a response video to the keto Netflix documentary, Magic Pill. Let me know if you're interested in that. All right, that's it for today. Feel free to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time, or I will see you in LA and don't be shy. All right, bye.